the warm glow that it can emit. The light of the little tea candle that I have in there is a little soft, so hopefully you still can see how it glows. usually, and do some baking myself. You combine the dry ingredients, then you combine the wet ingredients, and you combine them together. At least that's my experience and understanding. So that's <laughs> the language I have for this. I'm going to do the dry stuff first, then do the water, wet, and care. And then move on to painting my nails and finishing off with some cuticle oils and stuff. Okay? So I have this nail buffer, nail file from Flower. I don't know. Oh, Flowery. It's just what I found at Ulta and I love purple. One of my favorite colors, as you can see, that and green. Which we have this soft, fluffy mat here, just to provide some cushioning from any loud sounds. Okay, let me show you what we are working with. know that a lot of you, if you've been around for a while, um, may have been here for the era where my nails were super, super long. It was an era. Um, that for the most part, started to fade my nail care routines and things like that when I got into using brissons um, and I hadn't been caring for my nails that much um, and then I also recently found out that I had an iron deficiency and I'm still taking supplements too, and changing my diet a bit to get more iron. And that really affects your nail health, can lead to nail brittleness, which I was experiencing. My nails were breaking like they hadn't before. So I feel like now that I've been taking my supplements and trying to get more iron naturally in my diet with like lentils and spinach and stuff like that. I uh, feel like they've been able to grow longer than they have in a while, which kind of inspired this video and is inspiring me to get back into tending to them. So, let's file them. I currently have just a bit of polish there, um, but we will take that off in a minute. Now, my aunt from a young age would tell me 
you should file your nail going in one direction. Now, that's not always <laughs> doable for me if I want to achieve a certain shape. Like, I find it easier to work from both directions. But, there probably is some truth in that grinding down your nail all willy-nilly. But, I don't really have to do much shaping. Uh, I generally just try to mimic my nail bed shape, which is a little bit more um, square, but with a little bit of a curve, right? And that's kind of what I attempt to mimic. And apparently that's what, you know, could look best, oh, best on your nail. But you do you, you know. Whatever you like is probably what's gonna make you happy when you look at your nails, so do that. Excuse me. Maru is asking to go out, so let me let him out. He asks in and then when he realizes he's not going to be getting that many pets, he says, no, I'm out. Also, apparently, filing your nails on a flat surface can make it easier to shape them. Um, when it comes to, like, some of my nails, it's just easier to pick them up for me and move them around that way. I'm gonna be gentle here because it looks to be the beginning of a split in my nail. We're just gonna reinforce it with polish, hopefully. I'd be curious to know if You've learned about any nail rituals that maybe have been passed down in your family? Any little tips and tricks or no-nos? <laughs> Always interesting. My parents, when I was little, we were raised Seventh-day Adventist Christian, which has a lot of um, the word that comes to mind for me is restrictive, like I guess moral and ethical codes um, and expectations on women specifically, how to dress modestly and present themselves and stuff like that. And we weren't really allowed to paint our nails or, you know, use makeup and stuff like that. It wasn't really, at least from a young age, um, was not encouraged. It was discouraged. So, my mother also didn't really have a beauty routine or rituals, didn't really um, use makeup or nail polish, things like that, do her hair, anything, skincare, non-existent. So the person who I most kind of learned about that from, I would say, was my tia. I think 
she used to sell, what was it? Maybe it started with an A. Um, makeup, basically. And so, I think she just had stuff. It might have been all May. I don't know. She just had stuff to show us. And even one time when I was, at this point, I think, in middle school. Or end of elementary, I can't recall. She did my full face of makeup. It was not natural. It was full kind of glam, full face, full coverage. And I remember I felt, what did I, I felt like I was pretty for the first time. I think I felt like I wanted my face to be seen, like I wanted to take pictures, I wanted to go out. And I think partially it was just I finally felt more connected to, or like I looked like the way that women and girls in like the society I grew up in in the United States looked like I looked like a, a young lady, you know, sort of thing. Which growing up non-binary, although I didn't know I was non-binary, I just didn't really feel connected to. So when my aunt did my makeup, I felt connected to that, I think, in the fun ways, in the ways that it can be fun sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for maybe one of the first times in my life. And I could see how it changed the way people interact with you, particularly in my experience, men or boys at the time how they interacted with you. I just did my other hand, finished it up, and they are not perfect. <laughs> They're not all equal lengths, but that doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> They're good enough. So, next, we are gonna remove the nail polish that I have on so we can buff the nail bed where I feel it could use some buffing. years ago, in 
and it's lasted me still. Usually two pumps is enough to tackle both hands. And recently I was kind of curious, I guess, looking into the toxicity of certain ingredients and nail polish or nail polish remover and stuff like that. Um, because I was starting to see or notice the seven free polishes, 16 free, this or the other free, and I just wanted to look into it for fun. And one of the things I came across was um, acetone being, you know, potentially toxic. I think irritating to the skin, of course, with um, frequent exposure to it. And I think potentially um, being a neurotoxin when inhaled in large quantities for, you know, long periods of time can be irritating. Which I guess you could expect <laughs> with something meant to strip paint off of your nails. Um, I think the biggest tip was, you know, if you're gonna be and using acetone to do so in in uh, uh, ventilated space uh, or wear a mask and I think the risks are particularly um, greater you know with the amount of exposure so like if you work at a nail salon taking those precautions may be more important than you just use it every so often to do your own nails at home. But I think with all things that are toxic, <laughs> most things, I guess, things that I'm referencing that aren't like so, so horribly, horribly bad, <laughs> um, it's about limiting your exposure and being mindful of how your body reacts to it, you know, and maybe trying to limit uh, some of the more, more harmful uh, substances and stuff. But all this to say, I'm not really worried <laughs> about acetone or some of the, mm, I guess, marketing around polishes and stuff like that. I also usually take the leftover acetone and clean under my nails. Just get out any gunk that I can before I wash them and scrub them. Let's put this aside. And go ahead my nails a little bit. Again, what I found at Ulta was this four-way, right, buffer? Yeah. So you have this, which is basically this, but a little softer, I'd say. Yeah, softer. Defile the nail edge. Then Wait, where's two? <laughs> then you have this side to remove ridges, which is really what we're going to focus on. And then, <laughs> got the third. 
third side, which is to smooth your nail. It's just a little finer, I'd say, than the buffer. And then lastly, the smoothest side to buff and shine your nail. And I'm just going to focus on maybe two and three. Maybe a bit of the softer file to get rid of any sharp edges and fully smooth out the nail edge. Just go over the work that we've already done with that larger nail file. I probably need a new one. like this 
skin that I don't have that big cuticles to show you, but I never really have. But um, the skin kind of that's right at the edge. But the cuticles that I guess are referred to when you're like pushing them back and trimming them, it's actually like hard to see, but it would be like be right here, I can show you a little. If I mess with it, like the dry, dead skin that's close to the nail bed. And that's what you want to be pushing back and if you need to, cutting away. You do not want to be trimming or cutting the actual skin that's near your nail bed because that's alive and is protecting your nail from infection and things like that and it is needed for the health of your nail. I am going to be very gentle about it and I'm just going to use warm water and some cuticle oil to soften them and remove them. This is a really nice cuticle oil. I got it while I was on vacation. It's from the refill shop. Um, it's got a bunch of really good oils and ingredients. I originally thought I'd buy this and refill it myself when it got empty. And I looked at the ingredients list and I was like, oh, nope do that. There's so much in here. Um, and it smells good too. Um, although, uh, it smells really good. It's like herbal and sweet a little bit, but that might, I don't know if there's fragrances added or if it's just the oils, sweet oils and stuff like that. Facing that. I'm gonna pour some water now from my tea kettle. soak them long. Apparently 30 seconds to a minute is fine. So we'll just chill for a second. Just chill, chill for a second. I think an ASMR trigger that I'm not really the most fond of would be water. Water sounds. I don't know. I've never specifically looked up ASMR water sounds. I do like a good bottle shaking or spritzing sound, you know, and like haircut role plays and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> so this naturally separates and you gotta shake it up. It almost looks like a lava lamp. Weather, which it is cold right now, requires you to shake it more <laughs> to get it all to mix. That should be okay. It's got this neat little roller ball at the end. So we're just gonna. I'm just gonna use this wooden nail pick thing and push back gently 
on the nail bed. It should be able to just slough off basically after you soaked and oiled. Although I'm finding I have to scrub a little hard some in some spots to get it off. But I much prefer that than trying to go in with one of those nail clippers, which I've never been good at handling, and I usually would damage my cuticle by doing that, so. And that way you don't have to use any harsh product on your nail bed, which you want to be nice and healthy. oil just absorbed right in, so just adding a bit more. Okay, let's do the other hand. So both hands are done now, and I'm just gonna go in with this little scrub, I think. Hmm. I also have hand scrub and this one's a foaming hand scrub um, I think I'll go in with this and then work it in extra with this just to get rid of any dead skin and pamper my hands a little bit um, also to remove some of the oil that we just applied water to finish rinsing my nails. Use a little scrub just to make sure there's nothing else under my nail bed. Let me make sure my hands are 
nice and dry before we start going in with some polish. Yay! Breathable top and base coat that I'm going to be trying today. I got it because it sounded like it served a lot of different purposes and I like that. <laughs> I'm hoping it helps strengthen the nail as well as serve as a top and base coat. Um, but well, I guess I'll have to double check that. The name would make you think it would do that, right? Um, I've got this Plant Magic um, nail polish in the shade Green Goddess. And I thought it was a very beautiful almost Christmassy green shade and I guess I'm feeling festive so we'll go with this color. So let's start with the clear base. Sometimes it can help prevent your nails from getting stained. Also loves I think even though I'm gonna get some um, sound reducing windows installed, I think this room will have to turn into my nighttime filming room. And I might just dedicate a little corner in my bedroom to filming during the day, depending how good these windows are. It's very distracting to me and yeah, I'm tired of it. <laughs> I like to try and work in thin layers if possible. It just dries faster and uses less product in general. let that dry for eh, about like three minutes I'd say usually until I can run my finger over it very lightly without getting caught on any gooey <laughs> undried polish that's that if you're going for just basic nail care Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Put a little oil <laughs> and hand cream in. You're good, but I want to put some color, so looks like it's got a little. 
little bit of a sheen uh, to it. And the same thing, we're going to try to go for thin layers and slowly build up the color. And it will not be perfect. <laughs> Definitely not. I tend to get polish on my cuticles, around the edges, and I just let a warm shower take that off later. do too little than too much. I'm tempted to <laughs> sing and stuff. Usually I break out into song at all points in the day and I'm very loud so can't imagine what my neighbors hear <laughs> on a daily basis but we're being quiet right now. So Okay, first layer. <laughs> it's not looking great, but I know it'll be pretty when we go in for a second layer. Now, sometimes if I'm feeling really patient and I'm watching a show and it's all good, I'm relaxed, I'll wait to paint the other hand to avoid smudging. We're gonna risk it. When done correctly, or skillfully, this part can be pretty satisfying. Just doing your nails, painting them, seeing the paint go on and stuff. I love accounts that do like really elaborate nail art, particularly if it's like cute little, you know, nostalgic shows or like characters or scenes that's really cool hmm. first coat on both sides done and I think we'll just do two coats and that's really where you see the payoff I'm actually gonna dye my hair <laughs> speaking of harmful chemicals. <laughs> I'm soon going to dye my hair green, bleach it and dye it green. I'm excited about it. And I feel like after this bleaching, I'll take a break from bleaching for a while. I'm, I don't know. We'll see. Because I really do like having my hair fun colors. So, But I also love styling my curls. And as soon as those aren't styling anymore. That's it, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> this is with a second layer. This is one layer. I feel like you could go in with a third layer. It's also apparently good 
for anxiety and panic attacks is dipping your hands in ice cold water and holding it as long as you can just, I guess, regulates your nervous system Also, I ended up adding maybe like one more layer to some of my nails that looked a little too sheer just to even out the color. Oh, I just realized I still have to do the top layer. <laughs> Whoops. We waited maybe three, four minutes. Hopefully we don't mess up the whole thing. <laughs> but I'm hopeful that it'll be fine. So let's start with this nail. Give it a nice little glossy finish. This is a step that sometimes I go overboard because <laughs> I can't really see. Definitely goopier, but it's kind of like setting spray. <laughs> seal in the makeup, seal in the nail look. Or back to a baking metaphor, analogy. I think it's an analogy. It's like putting a glossy finish on a cake, thinking like chocolate. <laughs> just makes it look that much more appetizing and pretty. We've let it sort of dry for the past, um, like two, three minutes. And I'm gonna do the ice bath and just be careful not to knock any of my nails against the ice or the side of the bowl. was a minute and going with the next hand. I'm just gonna go in with that cuticle oil that we used earlier just to gently rub that in. So all that's left is a little bit of hand cream. I usually am not very good about going in with hand cream, but I do enjoy this one from shop. It's the Hemp Hard Working Hand Protector Cream. And it's very helpful in the winter time when our hands can just be a little more dry. So just take a little very soft. My hands feel 
feel extra smooth thanks to the hand scrub earlier. the final nail look. It's very cute. I love this color so much. It's so pretty. It's like a, I don't know, like a poisoned apple green kind of color. But also a little Christmassy as well. So, I feel